Hi, welcome back to Make Magazine's Weekend Projects. I'm your host, Kip K. Today, we're gonna to be using a number of different tools as we build a pair of peg stilts. Now, these stilts are a lot of fun to use. They can get you out of high water and they can also let you reach places you never thought you could before. So don't forget your safety glasses. Let's build some stilts. Power tools, here we come. You can find the DIY stilts project in Craft Volume 8. For starters, you'll need to gather up some lumber, and we're going to start off with a 2x2 two two piece of wood, and we're going to cut that into a couple of different sections. I decided to go with 36-inch stilts, not ever having built or walked on these before. I decided to start there. Make sure the wood you select has no bows or knots in it, because this is going to support your body. So we'll cut two sections of that, then we need to cut out two supports, which will actually hold the foot plates, and these are going to be two trapezoid-shaped pieces cut out of plywood. You can easily save material by cutting out both pieces at the same time, and you'll probably want to sand all of the edges for everything you cut. Now, we're going to be pretty much scrapping a pair of shoes, in this case, a pair of old sneakers that I have, and we're going to lay those down on a piece of plywood and draw an outline of the sneaker. And you can use a jigsaw or other tool to cut the outline of your sneaker out. I decided on the roto zip because it makes a lot of noise. Then we need to cut out a couple of upper supports, and we do this by measuring from the bottom of your knee and adding six inches. I came up with 24 inch pieces and cut those two out. And we'll also need two seven inch pieces. These will be the cross supports for our foot plates. Then we need to attach the upper support to our lower stilt. And we do that by using a couple of clamps and drilling two quarter inch holes directly through both pieces of their two by two wood. Our foot plate support also needs to be attached to the upper portion of our stilts. So clamp that in place and then drill two more holes through your 2x2 two two and through the support. Then the 7 inch foot plate support gets attached to that. So we're going to drill all the way through that as well. And these four pieces get attached with carriage bolts, one five and a half inches long and the other four inches long. Now everything we're doing is going to be duplicated, obviously, for the other stilt. After everything is nice and tight with a washer and nut, we're going to drill two holes through our trapezoid piece and into our foot plate support and run a couple of screws into that to keep it from swiveling. Now it's time to attach the foot plate, so we'll line that up over our support, drill some holes, and run some more wood screws through that. It's time to build our calf supports, and those are done with 4-inch pieces of ABS plastic. You can get this in your hardware store. We'll cut those to 6 inches long, and then we're going to cut out a 3-inch section out of these calf pieces. Now these will probably not fit over your calf, so put them in a vise, and you can either use a blowtorch, or in this case, I just used my heat gun to gently heat the ABS plastic and stretch it out so it would fit around my calf. You may have to play with it a little bit to get it to fit just right, but you can always heat it up again. Now these get screwed into the very top of the stilt support with one bolt, and then you have to create kind of an angle because of the way your leg bends when you put your foot down. So you'll create about a one and a half to two inch uh, angle for the calf support and screw that in as well. Now it's time to say bye bye to your chosen footwear as we drill a couple of holes through the sneaker and into the foot plate and then secure them with a couple of wood screws. The plans in craft call for using some strapping material with Velcro and hooks. I decided to just get a couple of old belts and use those to attach the calf support to my leg. I used a nut and bolt to secure the belts to the calf support. I've trimmed the end of the belt and then put some holes in it after uh, actually uh, wrapping it around my calf to make sure that uh, it would be tight enough. And uh, my sneakers are attached. These are pretty much finished. Uh, now I'm going to try to put one of these on. I've never used a pair of stilts before. Uh, and I've never been much taller than I am now, so I, I have no idea how this is going to play out. I've got a ladder out here uh, to, for some support, and I also have um, this tree above me, which I'm going to be able to hold on to as I put on these stilts. I'm going to just try one, and there's no guarantees I'm going to get any further than this, but I'm going to go ahead and put one on. And uh, the first step, obviously, is putting your foot in the sneaker. 
and uh, this actually in itself requires a fairly good amount of balance and uh, tying a nice tight knot that feels pretty good the calf support appears to fit the right spot I'm gonna tighten down this belt and if I'm got it right yep that's a good hole right there nice and tight so so that's it now I gotta tell you I'm really hesitant about uh, standing up on this because uh, I feel a little bit like I could easily fall over at any time just with the one still now maybe it's because of my limited experience in the circus uh, but I really don't want to uh, I, I want to bring some more weekend projects to you I really don't want to uh, break a body part <laughs> so uh, I'm not going to put both of these on um, just because uh, I just don't feel comfortable without having something really to hold on to as I walk. So that's how to make your own stilts. Give it a try and let us know how you do. We'll see you next week with another weekend project. Music